Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the rundown. I am your host, Evan from High Media TV, and, and along with my with my co-host, Mr. Brian Noda to Ortega. To, well, this is episode number fifteen of the rundown. Pleasure to have you all. And like Brian, me and my partner have been completely obsessed and playing nonstop Fallout Four. Of course, it's. It's the Fallout right now with the best mechanics that isn't online, with well, an online element. And not that Fallout 76 is bad, because they definitely up updated the hell out of it. It's Just... mid. It's mid. It's not bad. It's mid. But it's not bad. It, is, it, 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 it has two things going for it. One, it's got probably the healthiest like online community with like the least amount of toxicity re relative to its compatriots especially relative to the rest of the Bethesda communities. And two, um, it's um, multiplayer Fallout. It's multiplayer Fallout I mean, you play with your friends. It, with that gimmick, like I, I get the idea for the love of it, but I'm just like, ah. I even have it, got it for free from PlayStation. I'm just like, ah, I don't really have an interest. If you have, if, if, unless you're like a Fallout junkie like me, mm -hmm. Or you just are just you 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 have played four to death, and you just want more. Like there's there's three reasons to play Fallout New Seventy Six, right? One, you've played Fallout four to death. To the Makes sense. mods are with with or without mods, and you're and you just you played it to death, and you're done with it, and you just you want more. It's just there's no there's nothing else you can do. You're kicking a dead horse, yeah. But yeah, so like you need a, you want a new fresh space with new content mechanics and a steady stream of which uh you are um a, just a follow junkie like myself and you and you and you enjoy it um you want a easy to pick up easy to put down type of like game that isn't fucking league that is a pve centric type of game that isn't fucking you know going to like expect you to like have to like there's the, the 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 PvP scene in '76 is dead, and the community killed it. People just Appreciate like that. don't get me wrong. The PvP con the PV PvP in Fallout '76 a lot of fun, a lot of enjoy very enjoyable, especially with when it's spontaneous. It's just people want to play fun little wasteland games. They don't necessarily want to. Uh, they want their ship. They want yeah. their ship preserved. You know. Yeah, it's 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 like if, if you want to play something like Sea of Thieves, where it's like you know fun little like adventure game and shit without all the PVE bullshit. Seventy six is your bag. And lastly, you want to play Fallout Four with your friends. It makes sense. But back uh, to Fallout Four. Yes, back to Fallout Four. Yeah, I mean, I hear it. I think it is. Just a refreshing take. Don't get me wrong. Like I've been talking about for the last few weeks, I modded Fallout 3, getting into modding Fallout New Vegas, then trying out Tale of the Two Ways. But, uh, yeah, man, just Fallout 4 is a fun fucking experience. It is. And, like, here's my thing, right? Is, 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 the, does the dialogue system hinder what otherwise would have like like the options of what would have otherwise been an amazing game yeah it does but you know i will say like it's tight the gun look it has the best gunplay in the series because id software came in and tweaked some shit that's it feels it it feels good to play like id software are like the like they they created the shooter you know they create they made doom they made yeah, wolfenstein I mean... they made doom you know, so it's like, like they, like they made the, the they made Wolfenstein the precursor to all boomer shoot to all shooters, and then they made Duke the thing that actually set it in the spotlight. You know, like so it's you know the sh the shooting in four is stellar. It, the melee combat, uh, something to be desired. Like I want the block button to be a hold button. Okay, like I shouldn't just yeah. do a, I shouldn't just do like a like a quick block and that's it. No, but I don't like that either. I I do like the changes made with Jet compared to the previous games. 
where instead of just increasing your action points quickly, it just makes it so you're able to line up a shot to a fast moving enemy. Very helpful. Um, Meadow is very much playing this game. Like I, my, here's how I love to play Fallout 4, right? Mm. I like to arduously grind to like 2025, 20, get some solid weaponry, go to Nuka World, do all of Nuka World, get the perks for like siding with the Raiders, um, finish Nuka World, kill the Raiders, then go to Concord and start the Minutemen. Well, you could go to Nuka World at any level. You just you, had to you absolutely You absolutely can. Here's the thing. To, with Nuka World, and spoilers for Fallout 4 Nuka World, it's been out for over a decade. I don't want to hear it, but still, just spoiler warning. Um, it The gunners it, at the train station are strong. Those are going to prevent you from getting through levels like anybody less sub 10 instantly gonna die to that getting into once you get onto the tram into nuka world proper you're in the gauntlet the gauntlets the gauntlet is not necessarily easy the big thing you're gonna need are stim packed rad x you're gonna hit a lot of rads you're gonna hit a lot of traps things of that nature here's my thing right mm -hmm. if you know what to expect which like i kind of like do that's all well and good, but you have a pretty, you know, substantial boss fight towards the end there. At When you start the game at level 30, when you start the DLC at level 30, and you have, like, level 30, like, upgrades and gear and stat points, then you are kind of, you know, you're in a good spot. But, but, but like, even then you have to swap between, you know, the boss mechanic and the attack and the boss mechanic and the attack, and it's not, it's not easy. It's not convenient. It's it it is hard, and if unless you have the stat, unless you have the weapons to take them down and the armor to, to block the attacks, you're going to have a hard time. The minimum you can do it is like level twenty, which is where I'm at right now in my game. And I'm just sort of, I'm just sort. I I like to do the way I like to do things in order is before I even start the main quest, before I even go and save Nick Valentine, I like to. Do automaton. I like to get automaton done. I like to get Spectacle Island claimed, and I like to set up a robot and and vegetable starch farm there. And then I and then for and then for my care. And here's a fun tip for for you because I don't know if you know this. Whenever you set out send out a settler to um you know be a part of the network right yeah the supply lines the supply lines that settler counts towards your population yeah so you can only have a population of i think 21 max mm. and so and there's like 20 fucking locations in the game so you know you what do you do what do you well normal people would like have to go to this one goes to this one and then this one goes to that one and then that one goes to this one and just so on and so forth what I do is something that breaks breaks that. Here's the thing. Yes, you can only have you can only have a limit of like 21 settlers um, at a location. But if you craft a robot with automaton, the automaton DLC, you can go higher than that. So what Spectacle Island turns into is you have what 10 Robots focusing mm. exclusively on cultivating mutt fruit, corn, and potatoes, mm. which you just go out, which you just go out and like pick intermittently yourself. Because while yes, they will deposit a portion of them into the into the um, into the workshop, there's a maximum that which will be the which will be you know you know. So if you have a, a field of them, if you pick them all yourselves, you're going to get an illegal amount dump those into your workshop you will do the same thing with your water purification and then what you do is you craft your um you craft your vegetable starch and throw it back into the thing so net and then while you're doing all that to, to make sure adhesive is never an issue for you again 
you use the, the robot workbench, all of your workers are robots, but not a single human is on the island. Not one. Because mm -hmm. when it's all robots, happiness is never an issue. If shit mm -hmm. get attacked, if shit gets down, as long as you have crafted robots, eight accounts as a follower, you can't, don't, you, sh you cannot have her there. You can make it so you can basically turn Spectacle Island, the one island at the low, at the southeast portion of the map, south of Yangtze, you can turn this into the hub that connects all of your other um, settlements. As long that's as also you... where, real quick, that's also where the luck bobble hat head is. It's in the green, green shit. Is it? I think it might be. I think you might be right. Um, I think that's where it is. Yeah. Where you fight the Myler Queen. Uh, no, you're thinking of not Spectacle Island. You're thinking of the castle. No, there's one at Spectacle Island too. When to to, oh, enable, okay. to enable the workshop at Spectacle Island, you have to basically turn on the Meyer Lurk um um talent noise thing. And when you turn on the generator on the boat, Mama Meyer Lurk gets mad. But, oh, okay. Yeah, and so after I do all that and I get all my supply lines set up, now every time I can, I can just teleport anywhere where that's a that's a settlement, drop my shit and just keep it pushing, right? Um, hmm. from, after I do all that, and once I'm at kind of at the point to take Spectral Island to do Automaton, I'm ready for Nuka World at that point. I go to Nuka World, and we'll do all of the theme parks to do all that, and by the time I'm done Nuka World, and I've achieved everything, I've subjugated like one or two places in the wasteland, um, and, and finished the main quest, hopefully, uh, gotten Porter Gauge, it, like, maxed out my affinity with Porter Gauge, and, um, gotten you know, his, his companion perk after that. Uh, I then get the kill all the raiders quest from the lady at the market, kill all of the raiders, and mm. um, you know, then I, and then after that's done, I can actually play the game. I can go to Concord, save Preston Garvey, I can, then sit, I can then go spot save Nick Valentine, and the whole nine years. And what that does is, is is that it sort of puts me on a level of fuck you. Right? It puts me on a level of I, as a character, am stacked at this point. I have the um because because one of the things that that you if you are do if you are going to pick up like automatic weapons, the only weapon you need in the game, once you get to Nuka World, once you get once you have access to Nuka World Market. And you have the caps to afford it. The only weapon you will ever need in the game is the uh, is the uh, um, uh, uh, seven uh, seven fifty seven rifle uh, legendary that can be bought from one of the merchants in the marketplace. That... Well, let's hold on. Let, let's let's back up because you've been talking about this shit for 10, 15 minutes. Hold I'm on. so sorry. <laughs> Relax. You're like a little dog. You're like a puppy. I, I'm a Let, yapper. Let's I'm a certified uh, yapper. Let's go from the beginning here. What's the first perk you usually pick up? I always pick Scrounger. In the beginning of the game, Scrounger is that shit. I pick up, I max out Scrounger usually myself. The Scrounger yeah. perk myself. But it's usually not the first one I go for. The first one I usually go for is so my build spread uh, is usually two agility, is, is usually uh, one, uh. it's usually like one luck, two agility. Um, something like nine intelligence, ten charisma, one endurance, like four perception, four strength. Why do yeah, I, do I usually I usually go for a more balanced, a more balanced thing like five, six, and everything else, but five and like strength and endurance. Nah, because here, here's why, and I have, I have a reason for all this, right? So intel, so having that high intelligence. Um, basically gives you access to all of the perks that you're going to need. I'm going to need in my playthrough for crafting and building. Same thing, uh, four, three to four points in strength gives me access to the armor, of it, uh, uh, the armor perk. Uh, the extra point in strength is just sol solely for so I can have more carry weight. The two, the two points in perception, uh, the the the, the, hand, the three to four points in perception. Are to get me to the lock picking skill. Mm -hmm. uh, endurance 
Listen, I'm gonna be stacking armor and I'm gonna be stack stacking buying using using shit ton of stick packs. You know, once you hit level once I hit level 15, 16, like I'm not dying till in like Yeah, stim packs are never an issue in the game. Early no game, they, early game they are. Like like early or early going, you die a lot with this build. But once you get past like 10, 15, you're you're good. Charisma, but if you real quick, if you access the uh what is it, the root cellar and sanctuary and also go to the uh water tower, they're both purify water and stim packs are both fine. Yeah. Um ultimately, you know, I also I, what I will say like my my usual build for uh fallout is like is like is like is usually like four three like like three four one you know is usually strength strength three uh perception four endurance one charisma nine intelligence is like seven agility is like two and luck is like is like, is like one or two points and the reason and, and the reason i put in in, in a use of special book underneath sean's crib to mm -hmm. give me my 10 point charisma because 10 charisma carries you through the first 10 levels easy easy and most of the game because it'll because you are you mean intelligence no charisma the reason i say okay. charisma is because you can avoid most combat encounters that that like it, like if there's a combat encounter that involves like talking first you can talk your way out yeah, but I'll and, just say, like, real quick, save scumming in the game is so easy compared to Fallout 3 in New Vegas. Because you can't you okay. can't pause in the middle of the uh, dialogue interaction. In 4, you can, no problem. It absolutely is, but the bigger thing is that the big thing that you need in early game, caps, 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 and you can go to uh, Drumlin Diner. And you can extort Wolfgang for all of his money. You can, you, and, and, and for basically most, you know, lower, like, introductory, like, side quests and stuff, you can say, if, if, if you pay me, if you pay me X amount of cap, if you pay me, if, if, like, you can basically, like, get 400 caps out of every person and not fail, because you don't fail those speech checks. And so money becomes less of an issue for you, and you're able to accrue it at a faster rate. This allows you to buy the bullets you need, the stim packs you need. And everything is given that how squishy you are. And as far I'm as just the, saying, a charisma, charisma in Fallout Four specifically, I feel like it's not necessarily useful to max it out in the beginning. I feel like you have a better chance of maxing out intelligence only because the uh, what's it called, the amount of XP you gain is higher. See that that's part of the reason I put a like a six or a seven. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't mind that. Like I don't mind having my intelligence be like. Have, I, I put that into charisma because it makes it so. When I hit a speech check, that bitch passes, especially early game. Because that, because the thing is, is that most they don't expect you to like go ten into charisma, in the early game. So the speech checks are lower. You know, so mm -hmm. you know the only the things where you're like you'd have to have ten to get it. Will 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 do it. So it's like every time I see a red one in events that are like leveled b below level fifteen, I'm good. Yeah, but I just feel like I just feel like I don't know. I feel like especially with luck itself, because bloody mess is a great perk to have, and that's not until luck level like three or four. Yeah. Uh, better criticals and banking criticals are both fucking amazing perks. I don't use and, bats. And Grim Reaper, ah, oh, you don't use bats, totally respect it, but a fucking vats base build with Grim Reaper Sprint or whatever it's called, where you kill an enemy and fucking vats and then you get your action points back. Oh, it's amazing. Amazing. You can mow down a whole fucking, like, vault full of people. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I know it's goofy, but you know, yeah. the, my thing is, is, is that like, I don't really get behind the, and I don't think you do either, but the idiot savant leveling up thing where it's like you keep placing random objects in sanctuary or wherever in your settlements and then you level up back quickly. Here's, can I be honest with you? Mm. You are much, I've, I've done it. I've done the test side by side. 
And mm -hmm. I found that while like you may not gain the same amount of level, if you, you, you might gain more levels in an hour than you would gain in three. My thing is, is that if you just play the game for like three hours and like go do quests and shit and just, you know, actually play the game and like quests and kill things and fight and like do things like you're good. Like you, you will get, you know, t to level 10 in fucking no time. Yeah, I'm saying more so like level 75 shit. It's been a fucking while since you leveled up and you're like... I'm almost there. I'm tired of doing these fucking quests. Let me just place a few goal, goal posts in fucking Sanctuary and scrap them. But I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't know that pipe pistols, sorry. I didn't know that pipe pistols uh, are the main source of copper. So I've been leaving them on the fucking ground and in bodies and shit. Uh, I'm getting into the power now because I just did the uh, uh, Vault Tech DLC. So now yeah, I have that, like that's five a fun one. Power. Yeah. So I I I think I'm going to go through and do that quest line again, especially on stream, because there's some mm heinous -hmm. shit you can do that's very funny and it'll be great for stream. But um well, normally if I'm just playing and I and I just want access to the to the space, I just pop pop her the overseer gra grab the shit off her body and quest is over. Damn, but I will say, like, having the other stuff that uh, you get access to, just if you do, like, the base level stuff, it's it's really good. 100%. Um, I will say, I will say this, like, I do, I do think that, you know, Fallout 4 gets, like, in hindsight, has got way too much fucking hate for what it was. Like, and I feel like it was... The, uh, just to defend the reaction at the time, I feel like it was a lot of, they received a less quality game, not necessarily in mechanics, but like in the interactions, especially with the dialogue choices and compared to New Vegas, which was Obsidian's magnum opus, like they really went in depth with dialogue and <clears throat> RPG elements. I feel like that's why Fallout 4 got the reaction it did. Doesn't mean that it deserves it, because I definitely agree with you. But I understand why. You know? the, the the dialogue in that in Fallout 4 is a travesty. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the voice acting, the beat voice acting, is certainly did a good job with it, especially with how ex more expressive the the models are compared to the previous game. But I will say that, like, as an RPG, it's it's less of an RPG and more of a single. It's 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 unfortunate, but it, that that that's them's the breaks. I I do think though that as far as you know, Fallout Four is concerned, I do think that um, the things that it does remarkably like well is like Meadow isn't playing Fallout. So she she again. Meadow, my girlfriend is currently in the other room right now. Fallout Four. Mm. Oh, that, she's not playing Fallout Four. She's playing Nuka Cola Sims. The <laughs> she is treating she is treating the settlement system as you know the Sims, and you know what? That is a completely valid way to play. And honestly, I tell people like, hey, if you like Fallout and you want your partner to like Fallout too, as well. And they have the Sims installed on a machine somewhere. And they Fallout. probably do. Give them Fallout 4. No, I don't care if New Vegas is better. Give them Fallout 4. Because they, they there is gameplay there that they will love and enjoy and, and spend so much time on that eventually, by virtue of how you play the game, you have to go and do other shit. You have to go out and explore and get loot so that you can break down and use it to build more shit. So they have to go and play Fallout. And so they will experience the game. Is it the type of version of the game that you wanted? Maybe not. But you know uh, of the world that you wanted? But maybe not. But you know what? At the end of the day, you know what's going to happen, you know, in 2033 when they release Fallout 5? You're gonna, Everybody's going to love it. You're, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be paying, you're going to be, you know, paying 
for two new copies of it with company script at the at the at the, at the town you're indentured to. I will also say, like, that's why the、um, you know creators of the game put it in there. It's a popular premise. It's a popular mechanic. A lot of people really like the creativity of it all. You could do a lot of shit. Especially with the electric,、uh, the fact that they added elevators because I don't think that was in the base game originally. No, it wasn't. It was in contraptions. Contraptions. Was Holy huge. fucking shit! Yeah, if it wasn't for that, I would have never built anything. But because you could actually have the elevator go up the level and then actually build off of that, like thank God. Yeah, I I bet the me and Meadow went halfsies on the game of the year edition because it was like forty percent off. It was like sixteen bucks. Yeah, insane. I I think right after the show on PlayStation, it was like ten or eleven dollars. So, I was like, sure, I'll pick it up. Game、Why、of the、not? Year edition, of course. I was like, sure. I mean, it is the preferred version of the game. I was wasteful with my money in the past and bought every single creation on the Creation Club. Uh, you didn't have to do that. I didn't, but I did, and you know, there's some cool shit.、Uh, there's some cool shit that comes with it. Not worth all the money I fucking spent, but cool nonetheless. But like they added, I, I don't know if it's on the PC version or whatever version she's playing, but they added in the、uh, update a lot of creation stuff, the enclave stuff,、uh, no, random ra- I, weapon I, I, packs. I, I want to be very clear. They added a lot. I know not everything. Trust me, I don't. They, they, I don't. They, they, actually, they didn't even add a lot. They added a good chunk. Hey, Lily, how you doing? Oh, sorry. I, so what's just up, for, for for all of the pod people listening to the podcast audibly or watching this like after the fact, I am tech. I am currently live streaming while we are recording this podcast. Uh, find me at at hmedia.gg/live. Fun, fun. But yeah, but um, yeah, no.、Nah, I've been I we've been playing a lot. Of, you know what else I've been playing a lot of?、Mm-hmm. Which I think you and Noelia, and probably um, what's your roommate's name again? I'm so sorry. I feel like an asshole. Ellen, no Ellen, problem. All three of you probably could get it hella into playing together. What? Starting Valley. No, no, no. We have. We definitely have been playing. At least in the past. We haven't been playing as much. I will say, if you wanna, if you wanna take uh, uh, an exercise of trust with your relationship, you and Meadow should play Overcooked, because that's a game that you will start. <laughs> you'll turn on your partner, no question. It's like Uno. No, I, I won't do that because Meadow's competitive <laughs> as shit. She gets mean when we play Mario Party. But you two are working together. It's not against each other. That's the thing. No, she she's still gonna be she, no she's still gonna get mad at me because I fuck up or something. Definitely, without like, a doubt. I, I don't get I, I don't get that way. I don't get that way with like cooperative games like that. She does. Yeah, I am definitely she, me, Noelia, and Ellen all get like, how dare you? Why didn't you fucking do it? Why didn't you do this? Blah, 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 blah. But Overcooked is a great game if you really want to. It, it's fun. You yeah, cook,、uh, cut stuff up, cook it the whole nine yards, sell it. It's almost like cooking, mama, but on steroids. I will say, Evan, if you have a Netflix account and anybody out there who、We、does,、don't. I know, I know that there are you know、uh, asterisks about the people who own Netflix accounts, but we get it through a family member, so you know, fuck them.、Uh, Godzilla minus one, really good movie, great movie actually, fucking amazing. Isn't that、Out、the one where all... him, isn't that one that the one where him and Mothra go on a date or some shit? No, 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 no. It's the most recent one that came out of Japan. It's the one that won the award for、uh, you know effects that were done back in the nineties. The whole nine yards. I want the. Don't get me wrong. Godzilla looks a little you know foolish, but that's kind of the Japanese way of filming. Uh, it's always been the case with Godzilla. He's always kind of looked a little tacky in the in the West. They're the West. We're the East. Yeah, right. Or are they the East and we're the West? What do you mean? 
Japan? Are they the East or are they the West? They're the East. And that's how it's always been in the East, you know. Uh, but the emotional story of it all is amazing. One of the greatest emotional, uh, you know, Godzilla movies out there, I would say. Maybe the most serious ever. Um, just amazing. Uh, the way that they do the beam and ah, uh, it's all about Godzilla. I won't spoil anything, obviously, because it's a very recent movie. Lionsgate. I don't know if you know this, but Lionsgate literally like blocked the release for America because they were afraid it was going to compete with Godzilla versus King Kong too. You know those assholes. And nothing, nothing compared to Godzilla minus one. But um. It's all about, you know, the human experience come together, rebellion against a force of nature, that whole thing. And the story behind it, the man, the main character, the supporting cast, you care about everybody. And in this day and age, with the way movies have been making me feel, oh, it's refreshing. It's very refreshing. Makes sense. I, we, well, you know what me and Meadow have been watching together? Private practice. Uh, I don't know what that is. The spin-off of Grey's Anatomy. Ah. So Grey's there's Anatomy. a Grey's Anatomy white woman, woman one, one piece, piece spin-off. Yes. <laughs> it's like it's like if they gave um It's like they if they gave like Nami's sister her own show. Okay. I don't know what that's in reference to, I'll be honest. You haven't got you you haven't watched any one piece have you no and i'm um, not going to honestly can i be can i keep it a buck with you dude i might do the i'm um, not the netflix version but the like remake that wit studio is doing i might watch that fuck that, that looks interesting no, fuck that just read it just read it if i would have read berserk i'm not reading one piece not happening I would uh, read Berserk first. Dog, read you, will, you will get through an arc in the same an arc of the manga in the same amount of time it would take you to like fucking get through, you know, a third of like one arc in, in one piece. Like and you just you knock them out. Well, I would do that uh, uh not a bridge version, but one pace. I would do one pace. I can't figure out how to do it though. I don't know, I don't understand the 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 terminology. But uh yeah. One Do you know what that is? One pace dot net. One pace is a fan project that recruits re re recuts let me just put this up here. The One Piece anime into an endeavor bringing it more in line with the pacing of the original manga. The team accomplishes by removing filler scenes not present in the source material. Fixing animation errors and correcting subtitles this process requires meticulous editing and quality control to ensure no seamless music to ensure seamless music and transitions. As a result, One Piece is over 40% faster to watch compared to the original One Piece anime while retaining the entire canon. That's over 9,000 minutes or 150 hours. Saved! Saved! Out of watch. We have hundreds of episodes on our watch page to download and stream. Please see the frequent last question in our Discord. When will my favorite episode? Oh my god, they're still working on it. They ain't up yep. to date. Out of control. No. How? So. How? I'm curious. Like how? Arcs one. They got. They're pretty far. Let's see. That is. Let me see where it's. I stop right. Yeah, that's where Luffy gets a waifu. Um. Oh, fuck! Oh, they they twenty one really... hours. God damn! Jesus Christ! God damn! They, uh, they really. Yeah, they're up to date. That's up to date. I <laughs> shit, maybe. Maybe uh maybe I'll have to get me and Meta to watch One Piece. Jesus. I mean, it's a better use of your time than fucking trying to start the anime from beginning to end. That's how you really make your spouse get mad at you. Meta wants me to watch uh, 
Meadows upset with me because I my experience with watching Full Metal Alchemist was the Adult Swim cut, and I've never seen Brotherhood, and she wants me to watch Brotherhood with her badly. I mean, I've heard and seen scenes from Brotherhood that are amazing. So, you're not going to hear me say anything bad about it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, anything you wanted to bring up? Uh, Star Wars Al- Acolyte came out. I haven't started it. Did you hear anything about it? No, IGN said I- it was a 6 out of 10. From IGN? IGN yeah. gave a video game, a Star Wars video game, a 6 no, no, out no, of it's 10? No, it's a show. It's a show. Still. Yeah, I know. No, trust me, I know. Um, People do not like IGN. Like, here's the thing, though. Like, uh, IGN would give, like, like, IGN would give Sloppy Toppy to, like, the, to, like, a slime creature if it would retain their ability to get early access viewing of material for the website. So it's, like, they don't, like, anything, if, if IGN rates something less than a 7, that means, like, it was so bad that they could not, like, avoid doing that maybe like what is it is, it is it just supposed to be like jedi ninjas or some shit i think it happens before the phantom menace uh it's supposedly about like an assassin that's tracking down uh jedi before order 66 before revenge of the sith before the phantom menace the whole nine yards I don't really know what the premise is. Again, I haven't what watched it. What does this take place in, like the you know the old republic? Maybe I don't know. But let's see. I don't know. But um, I'm just gonna look up when it takes place very quickly, just to see. I'm not also, gonna hopefully also, spoil. Also, also, also to, just to bring up the man you can't fucking escape on this podcast. Drake removes all Kendrick Lamar diss tracks on Instagram. I know, I saw that. Very quickly, it's during the High Republic era, around 132 BBY. Oh, yeah, I don't so know this what is, that uh, means. That means this is 100 years before... Um, the Phantom Menace. That no, I know. No, 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 this is 100 years. This is, that, BBY stands for when they blew up the fucking Death Star the first time. Oh, okay. So the end of A New Hope. Um, no, no, no. This is a hundred years before the events of the Phantom Menace, which took place in thirty-two BBY. Right. I was just telling so, you what BBY meant. It, it just means. Gotcha, like, gotcha. B, BBY basically stands for blew up, blew up over yonder. You know, like basically blew up the fucking Death Star. That's what. That's Got the it. event that. So. Wow, that's as as big as Jesus. That's crazy. That was their Jesus blowing up the Death Star. I right. think I, I respect think, them. I, I think BBY is just sort of like a frame of reference of time for like the most known event in Star Wars. You know, which was like the end of A New Hope. Well, the guy. I'm just gonna end on this. The director who made this is saying that he is interested in doing a Old Republic show. I mean, they'll never do it. They'll probably never do it. Or if they do, it'll be 20 years from now. But that would be great. I want the Andor guy to do it. Wasn't the Andor <laughs> guy the... Uh, wasn't the, I don't know, I, I, like, I, I still have to watch Mandalorian Season 3. And I think after that, I think I'll be done with Star Wars. Like, unless, I already have Star Wars fatigue. Uh, uh, Obi-Wan like, Season 2, maybe. But like, I, I'm I, done. I, I might watch Kenobi... You know, with Meadow, just because she has a big fucking crush on um, you and McGregor. You and McGregor. She says I look like him a little bit, and I'm like, okay, a little bit, maybe a little baby fat, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Like, I, I, I'm, I like Star Wars like conceptually. I think like I like it when they do stuff in the Star Wars universe that isn't just, you know, big, epic. War, like burr, 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 burr. like I like like lower key stories. Like I probably would like Acolyte. You know, I probably I like I, you know if it's like if the energy level is lower, I'm on board. 
You know what I mean? I I'm just afraid that uh, Star Wars is gonna go down the Marvel route where it too much is too much. You know. Here's the thing. The, the, here's the difference, right? The movies were the best part of Marvel. The shows were supplemental material, but take them or leave. Them. Like some of them were good, some of them were bad, some of them were mid, but they all kind of looked like they were all like they were all considered mandatory watching, right? Mm. Here's the thing: the movies are such like Disney views the movies of um like the Star Wars movies as Disney views Star Wars movies the same like like the big movies the big three trio movies the same way Microsoft treats Minecraft it's lightning in a bottle it's super fucking valuable they do not want to mess with it too much and accidentally fuck it up so they play the super duper safe options yeah, just what I'm saying is, I think with the amount of shows that they're doing in the Star Wars universe, I feel like audiences are going to have fatigue by the time the next main trilogy or whatever trilogy, because it's probably still going to be a three movie film based structure. Uh, I think people are going to have a little bit more fatigue for that. Maybe they'll still be excited, but I don't think it'll be like, uh, you know, what the fuck was Seven called? Uh, uh, Force Awakens. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll be a Force Awakens or Phantom Menace moment. You know, I, I where people were like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, people like I, I Force Awakens was announced when I was a senior in high school, and I was a sophomore. My computer freshman. science, my computer science teacher at the time. Like, my intro to computer science teacher is a new fucking elective or whatever. Um, he said, all right, so I wanted to sh talk about this with you guys real quick. And then he played it. And then he spent the next 15 minutes talking about, he, he, made, he made it sound like, because <laughs> he's a fucking nerd, giant nerd. And he's like, I need you guys to understand, like, like how important this is, like, for, for someone like me and why this is, like, a big moment. This was fucking comp side. This guy teaches biology normally. Insane. So, uh, but, so, so, so it's like people were fucking geeking and they were so fucking excited for this shit. And I, you know, and, and, and I don't, I haven't watched, seen the movies. I haven't seen the movies and I don't, you know, it might, it's one of those things where it's like, I might watch them when they announce a new trilogy the only way I'm going to experience these movies is by playing Lego Star Wars with my girlfriend. You've never seen any of the Star Wars films. I've seen, I saw the, I saw, I've seen the prequels, the main line, not the sequels. I haven't seen any of the Oh, Star okay. Wars. Yeah, I, I, I was about to say, how the fuck have you never seen the prequels? What well, the I, fuck? I didn't, <laughs> I, oh, I didn't see, I didn't see, um, the, the, like four, five and six of Star Wars, A New Hope. Um, Je Je uh, um, uh, Empire Strikes Back and uh, uh, Return of the Jedi. I didn't see those three movies until I was like a 16 year old kid. Damn. I didn't see Lord of the Rings until I was almost an adult. The only reason I saw the prequels first was because I, I, I saw Revenge um, of the, Revenge I saw of the Sith theaters. was coming out. Yeah, so did I. I, saw that I was like four or five. It was yeah, crazy. No, I was like five or six. It's great. It was wonderful. I loved it. it right. and, I, and here's the thing it's like, I never understood, and like, here's the thing, let's, let's talk about the prequel, just briefly. I mean, especially, very quickly, with the lens and perspective of somebody who was there for the original trilogy. Like, could you imagine the disappointment seeing Phantom Menace? <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? Like, this was... Here's the thing about, like... It was like a death do after the original series yeah and 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 here's the thing it's like the prequel is a mystery it's, a, it's, it's about conspiracy it's not it's it, this is not a story about like grandiose large bites which are certainly there this is like explain this is like how did this verbose you know republic this democracy fall to fascistic authoritarianism 
-hmm. And it shows this in like really rounded real it is arguably the most realistic part of Star Wars of the of those prequels and like you know the the thing that's most compelling to me about the prequels is the geopolitics the the background like the, everything going on like like why are we, it's what's interesting to me is like why things are happening not that they're because here's the thing that they're happening like like here's the difference between and why i think like a lot of the people who did who grew up with the original trilogy didn't like the prequels the original trilogy is about why are we fighting the empire because they're evil why are there space wizards i don't know fucking fucking like they have laser swords it is not about the why mm -hmm. it is about the is it is about this is happening we don't care why it's happening. We don't care why the um, we don't care why the re rebellion is a thing. We don't care about X or Y or Z. All we care about is my, uh, uh, right versus wrong, space wizard epic battles. You know, sci-fi fantasy, sci -fi, science fantasy adventure. Well, I think that's the responsibility of any prequel. It's to focus on the why, not the is. The exactly. is was the original concept. Exactly. So. And the big thing is, is what the prequels is they do the why immaculately. The the fact like in in in, in the reason they do and they don't. They do. And they, so they, they, they do. Here's the thing. Here's very the quickly, thing. I, the only reason I say that is because one big important part of the prequels. The whole downfall of the fucking empire, uh, the beginning of the empire and the downfall of the Jedi is literally done by Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> so here, here's the thing. The act that you're talking about with Jar Jar Binks. Elected, I know there's so, there's so many more. Uh, I know there's a lot right, more. But here's the thing. Going if through. Jar Jar Binks didn't make that petition, somebody else would have. Because, oh, without a doubt, I'm, because because but, it, it is about the, the political wrangling that Palpatine did, what guaranteed that somebody was going to suggest that, and if he couldn't get Jar Jar, if Jar Jar Binks wasn't going to do it, somebody else was going to. But that's me commenting on not necessarily how the prequels did the why of stuff. That's me commenting on why the fuck did George Lucas choose to do it this way? Why did they that, decide to have Jar Jar Binks make that declaration? The I, whole... No, all across the three movies. Every fucking moment in that movie, there is a scene that sticks out in your head. I want to say there's like 10, 20 scenes in every half hour of each fucking movie in the prequels that makes you stop and say, why did he choose to film it this way? <laughs> so... so Usually that can be boiled down to for the kids. He wanted to have like some shit that like so for kids to watch and shit. Especially with like the, the goofiness of the Gungans and shit like that in the first movie and all of that. Here's my thing. Mm. You know, you know, that doesn't take away from my point of like showing the background setup. Like, is Jar Jar Binks' voice kind of immersion breaking in that moment? Yes. But, you know, the, the, the role he's playing there of a, you know, of a um, unknowable, like a, 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 a willing, you know, idiot could have been played by anybody. And having Jar Jar Binks play the, will, the willing idiot, I don't know, that makes sense on some level. But, like, the Gungans are not fantastic in terms of, like, design, I, I, I think, I think, I think, but... Regardless. But also, the the difference between... Because, like, effects is also very important here. The reason why the original trilogy of Star Wars still holds up today, and I mean, not amazingly, I won't say amazingly, but it still fucking holds up, is because everything was practical effects. Outside of the lightsaber duels, especially the second episode, looks horrible. Horrible. That, that that's that's a that's you know if they if they had re, if they had made the the prequels today i think i don't think that would have been any 
league's ba- better. But I think the time, but also the fact that everybody on Lucas's staff for the prequels were... I think they were astonished, honestly, that after 22, 23 years, this man could still make stories on this big screen that were still impactful. And even though the first and second movie weren't really received that well, I feel like everybody was just gung-ho with his whole idea and never said no once. I, I think, think I, I think that, that I think that that's might be true. But to my but to get back to the original point I was trying to make about like how th- this shows the fault like how like this shows the why. Like when you think about it, the downfall of the Republic started because of a trade conflict over taxable shipping lanes. That's it. Yep. That 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 like and the fact that a tri- that a corporation was able to get powerful enough to have a a governing a, a, a voting seat in a galactic voting body of government. Well, honestly, it was because from the very beginning, Palpatine had the ability to just be trusted. It was all about bureaucracy. And I respect the film, especially at the time. Because you just had the Iraq War. You just, you had everything going on in the, uh, you know, Middle East and shit like that. So, I understand why. I'm just like... Padme said it best. Padme said it best. This is how democracy dies. To thunderous applause. It sh- the, the, se- the prequels showed... Maybe not like you know point for point perfectly on screen, but like if you pay attention to what's being said, read the bits at the beginning of the movie uh, of the beginning scroll of each movie, and and you know understand like you know have a little bit of like nuance, like knowing what goes on politically and shit, like and just being able to read into it, it you can see point for point like how the the empire did like the empire didn't rise from the at the bottom the corpse of the republic because of some like great power and palpatine palpatine is a weak sith compared to many of his forebears the reason he you know he was able to become emperor was because he was politically savvy he was a he was good at playing politics and 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 you know his and he didn't have to do anything new he stole everything from the jedi and the clones and uh what's it called the republic and then destroyed the republic so it was like eh, i don't really have to listen to anybody <laughs> yeah it's like here's the thing it's like um darth pelagius his master yeah. i think it, i think it was his master yep was a lot was lived for like two three lived for hundreds of years way beyond his natural lifespan was a was like a use of sith powers to get like really high in galactic banking was unbelievably wealthy was beloved by many because of his charitable contributions he very he was very powerful he was a very powerful sith and he used his power to enrich and, and give himself more power in the form of like manipulating the economy and stuff here's the thing palpatine was like palpatine like basically i think if i remember correctly assassinated his master in a way yeah. that like killed know, him in his sleep yeah he, he didn't kill him in like he, he like granted he did it in a way that was compliant with like the dark side of the force but yeah that's the whole thing the the dark side is never the side of full power until the empire and then even then they get destroyed <laughs> there was, it, it took a, I think something like a fa- the the rule of two the, the 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 um the Sith Lords right their the 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 plan to take down the Jedi took a thousand years and to build an empire to rule the galaxy that was the plan that Sith had been working towards as a collective generation after generation for a thousand years and and it and, and it only lasted. It lasted less than half a century. Yeah, it was only like 30, 40 years. Exactly. And even if you consider like the woo-woo clone bullshit that Palpatine did in like the 
newer movies. Like it, 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 it. He, he, Palpatine gave a lot of shit to someone like Count Dooku for not really embracing like the dark side of the Force and like not having like that the the Force warp that like makes Palpatine look ugly. He uses the dark side of the Force. It makes your body. It warps your body because it's not natural. And Count Dooku didn't have that. He but he was powerful on his own just by virtue of like his swordsmanship. He could. He basically. Could well, be, he was a he was a Jedi Knight first. He was. And then he got but, turned. But 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 just because like you know you're a Jedi like like lightsaber combat is is equal across the set. He was the great greatest lightsaber combatant in the galaxy. He didn't really need to use like force power like 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 dark dark side powers like that. And you know, and Palpatine like looked down on him for that and gave him shit for that. But the but the problem is is that Palpatine himself like was not a powerful practitioner of the dark side and so you know it's it's like you know if he had not neglected cultivating those powers he hadn't he stayed in it he hid his powers he hid them for decades and ages because like he's constantly around jedi you can't cultivate your dark side powers otherwise yoda who lit who's 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 chilling three blocks over is gonna is gonna lock into that shit like white on rice yeah I don't know. It's just, it just really goes to show that, like, you know, just because like the dark side of the force is like arguably more powerful than the light side in certain ways, you know, the 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 fallacies the, the, that come the not fallacies the uh, the, uh, the 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 in, in feebleness of like the of like the type of person you have to be. Like, I as much as I love the idea of like Ray Jedi and like neutral Jedi and stuff, like I kind of go with it with like George Lucas and George Lucas says no. Dark side's evil, light side's light. This is the light, what the dark side stands for, and because and this is what they normally will do. Yes, it's love and passion. It's all it's, like, it's all this stuff that goes with it. But like ultimately, like the dark side seeks to bend and bind people to their will, and you know the light side doesn't. Now that doesn't mean that light side people can't be evil, but like you have to like. It's like no, it, but. It's you a selfishness see, spectrum. It's a self. But that's exactly what, why you need the uh, gray Jedi the it, it's side not, of it. it all. That's that's a fan makeup. That that's a problem. No, 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 because no, 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 because unless did you watch Ahsoka? Like she is a gray Jedi, self-proclaimed. I didn't know that, that is in. I kind of yeah. want to watch Ahsoka a little bit. That looks like fun. It's fucking great, especially if you grew up with the. Uh, OG Star Wars. The Clone Wars, yeah. Yeah, fucking great. Uh, what's it going? But I just want to say also, like, I feel like thematically, cinematically, on, especially in the movies, we have never gotten a truly great Sith Lord yet. And that's why I'm so interested in fucking, uh, what's it going? In the Old Republic. Like, that was a time when the Sith were at an all-time high. They were extremely fucking powerful. They were proficient in goddamn Star Wars abilities. They had all the dark side abilities. Like, that's why it's so interesting to me, yo. I just, ah, we are well, being robbed. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, is, is that, the, that, like... Don't get me wrong. I just want to say one last thing for people who are going to be like, I'm actually uh, Darth Vader. I, Darth Vader in the fucking comics and legends and everything like that is a ungodly Sith Lord. But that's not what we got in the in the movies. Let's yeah. be so real. And also Darth Vader, like here's the thing, Anakin Skywalker before the Darth Vader vacation was probably the single strongest entity in the fucking galaxy at that point. Then before or since because of like how fucking like because he was the fucking chosen one or some shit and the reason why palpatine put so much like like the reason why he palpatine put him in the suit he did and not a better one is because you know he's constantly in pain he's never able to sleep effectively he's like he's not at, he doesn't have the same range of motion that he had when he was a well like a non-cyborg and why well it's because Palpatine is a is a Weasley bastard and knows that Anakin would fuck would fuck him the moment he was he didn't need him anymore. And, and that's exactly what he did. 
Yeah, that's exactly what he did. And the reason why, like, he kept him in that suit specifically is because he, like, the suit kept him, like, def was was defensive towards lots of things. Except one thing. Force lightning. Lightning. Specifically. Yep. And, and specifically, you can't make repairs or edits to the suit unless, unless, like, some, unless, like, Palpatine's using Force Lightning to keep hit to keep Anakin's body systems going simultaneously because there's not technology to do that based on how outdated and old the technology is. So it's like it was like Palpatine's ploy to keep an apprentice and keep the rule of two, and also in a way that he wouldn't fucking die. No, that's not true because they had the medbots. That's the only way that Anakin was kept alive when they were putting him into the suit, at least for the films. Maybe not for the comics or legends. So it's like there, I, I forget the exact reason, but I think Palpatine's Force Lightning was a big reason, like is uh, like why is like like what like like the life support given from Palpatine's Force Lightning and kind of like, using the Force to sort of keep Anakin together uh, was a big reason why he why like Anakin couldn't ever really betray him because it's like he they can't make. Change, too many changes to update or or like fix the suit if uh you know if Palpatine's dead and he's then he immediately is on a fucking time because I Makes think because I think very quickly because I think somewhere that, it says that um Vader hold that thought to I'm just gonna get something to drink I'll be right you're, back you're good but I was gonna say to the folks um Vader actually uses the Force to keep his um. Yo, fucking hustle! I'm all we're recording this bitch, but um, but um, Vader actually uses uh the Force as to kind of like keep his fucking suit together as well. And when he's passed the fuck out, you know he needs another Force user to keep his shit together. And if he can't, that's it's not a good spot. But yeah, at at but um. Yeah, hold on, wait. He's going back. Three, two, one. Episode what was five. all that? What am I head? Why do my headphones smell like a gym mat? Uh, cats? Question mark. I don't know. But um, a Star Wars stuff aside, is there anything else that you wanted to chat about, or you want to wrap up? Uh, I think we're good for now. What do you feel like? Feels good. I, I'm feeling. I'm feeling pretty good, all things considered. Okay. Well, sounds good. Bet. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for watching the rundown. This has been episode 15. Uh, for those watching the live stream, I'm going to go back to probably playing Elden Ring or some shit shortly. But um, if you want to if you want to follow us, you can do so uh, wherever you get your pods. You can also um, subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, the whole nine yards, at um, HI Media TV everywhere. Uh, you can also find Brian at uh, no.2 underscore Brian on instagram jesus dude i i need you to fix your at on youtube so it's like something not a bazillion degrees long i'll help you with that later. regardless <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this has been the rundown if you want to support me and the things that i do please consider donating one a poultry dollar at well, himedia.gg slash tip i am very poor and a dollar a month is a boon to my mental health you also get early access and exclusive videos, other perks through service through our Discord. Also join our Discord, the community's lit, and we'd love to have Um Thank you for watching. Hello. Say bye, Brian. Thanks for watching, y'all. Peace. Also keep an eye out on Brian's Instagram story for his new podcast with Alan. Yes, we're trying to figure it out this week. Bye.